all the motion that we've been looking at is straight line motion so far. Even when we look to projectile motion, we could break that up into components and still break it down to two components that were straight line. The other important type of motion is circular motion because pretty much we can describe all motion as either we can break it down to straight line or circular. So let's have a little bit of a talk about this circular motion. So a thing called angular velocity. So if we're in a straight line, what we think of velocity we call linear velocity. So angular velocity, we're going around a circle. So obviously there's going to be some sort of center of the motion and a radius. Now, if a point moves from A to P along the circumference, it will sweep out some arc. So the rate of change of that angle is the angular velocity of the, uh, of the particle. And so we usually measure it in radians, because we're going to end up using calculus on this. So radians per second. Oh, it doesn't have to be per second, but you'll find that's the most common one we, we end up with. So omega, which is the symbol we often use for angular velocity, is the rate of change of theta with respect to time. So we could call it the theta to t. Or using the dot notation, we could call it theta dot. So theta, if you like, would be the angular displacement. So linear velocity, how do they relate? Well, linear velocity, we can also call tangential velocity. Because at any point, we can draw a tangent to the circle. As the way I like to think of it is if I wanted to calculate the um, tangential or the linear velocity, it's like, imagine if there was a string attached to the center and I cut the string. It would fly off at a tangent at that point and that speed or velocity that it flies off with would be the linear um, velocity. So off it goes with a velocity of V. <coughs> so the direction of velocity then, therefore, is always at right angles to the, to the radius. So if that distance AP, so our linear displacement, I'm going to call X. But remember, we know x is equal to r theta, so we can come up with something that relates linear displacement and angular displacement. r, of course, is just a, a constant. So all I have to do is differentiate both sides with respect to t. And so dx to t, linear velocity, will equal to the radius times the theta to t, angular velocity. So v is equal to r omega, or if you're using the dot notation, r theta with a dot, Period. Time taken for one revolution turns out to be 2 pi divided by that angular velocity. That's how you can work that one out. All right, just a simple little example. Satellite up there in space somewhere. Uh, 20 revolutions per day it's moving around. So what would that be in radians per second? Angular velocity will be 20 times 2 pi radians per day which then I can change into radians per second because we can divide it by 24 times 60 times 60 and we end up with pi on 2160 radians per second which obviously is a, a very very small amount when you think about it. I mean 3.14 divided by 2160 every second it's not moving much at all. However it is actually moving very fast when you take into account the radius that it's traveling at because uh, the, the satellite would be out, say, 9,000 kilometres from the centre of motion. We change it into kilometres per hour. Well, velocity is equal to r times omega. So I get 9,000 times pi on 2,160. That's kilometres per second. We would end up with 15,000 pi kilometres per hour. So look, yeah, that's, that's all I want to look at today. Uh, it's just, as I say, an introduction to the circular motion. There's only a handful of questions there to look at in 9A.